Hey there, horror movie tea sippers. The following podcast episode will contain spoilers for the movie we are about to review. If you have not seen the movie and do not wish to have anything ruined prematurely, please do not continue to watch or listen until you have seen the movie. And welcome to the Horror Movie Tea Podcast. Today, on the very first published day of October, Halloween! <laughs> Halloween! Um, we are covering Halloween! Uh, Little Shop of Horrors, specifically the one from 1986. But before we go into the review, let's grab our cups and talk about tea. So today, I am just in that fall mood. I am drinking the high calf tea cinnamon toast. And I am drinking the Republic of Tea's high calf tea palmberry black. They come in these nice little adorable carrying travel case type thing. It has six bags in this little tin. Yeah, that's impressive. It really is. Like, me and Jess were talking off camera. It's like, you could totally get the bigger pack yeah. and then just keep the little tin whenever you want to travel. Yeah. It's so cute and little. For all those tea obsessies that move like around us. to places that don't have a lot of tea options, you can bring your own freaking tea. It's travel size for your convenience. Yes. Of course, for our tea sippers out there, just brew you a cup of tea, sit back, relax, and we hope you enjoy the review. So, for Little Shop of Horrors... It is about a guy that finds a plant that fell from outer space and he's doing everything he can to take care of it, like watering it, giving it uh, nutrients, fertilizer, all of that. Nothing's working. And come to find out the plant needs blood. And as soon as he gives it blood, it gets a lot bigger and then it moves on to flesh. So the, the plant... It's almost kind of like a genie where it's like, oh, you feed me people and I help your dreams come true. But of course, it it doesn't work out in the end. Careful what you wish for kind of thing. Yeah. Well, so for entertainment, this was the first time that I had ever seen Little Shop of Horrors. Like, I had heard of it a lot about it. But, like, I didn't know, like, the feed me see more. Like, I had no idea that was from the movie I really didn't know much about the movie at all. I did know there was a plant involved, but that was kind of the extent. But what's crazy and what I find kind of funny is this film is based off of the 1982 musical that's based off of the 1960 film. So it's just like film based off a musical based off a film. Oh, it's funny. But I would rate this a 7.5. It's a very entertaining movie. I love that the music is so catchy. Like, it is. There's it a part really is. I was telling Jess, it's like, I've never been so happy about world domination. <laughs> so I was just like jamming to the music. The practical effects are great. Yes. And I mean, it was the 80s, which, you know, they, ha- they had stuff down by then. But it's like the effort that they put to animate a plant was pretty impressive. And it wasn't... CG, from what I could tell, it was like oh, no. all puppetry yeah. and animatronics. For sure. So they did an amazing job there. Yes. And then I have to bring up Steve Martin is great. And specifically <laughs> the Steve Martin with Bill Murray. Yes. Oh my God. That was great. I love it. I know, like, we, we actually watched the director's cut first. And- Yes, and so I was like, because Jess was over here like, that's not how the movie ends. I was like, what? I have no memory of this. Yeah, and so we went on YouTube (laughs) and watched the actual ending, and I will say, typically, I prefer director cuts, but in this case, I actually prefer the theatrical version. Yes. Because it's like the theatrical version, yeah, it kind of has an ominous ending, but everybody lives, but in the director's cut, it's very much a... a musical tragedy ending. Everyone's gonna die. Where everybody <laughs> dies and it's like, you're screwed and then the movie ends and you're like, oh my god. It's like so depressing. But yeah, I can see why people like that. Because at first when I saw that, I'm like, 
man, it's like the movie was great up to this point, and I don't know if I would watch this movie just because I know how it ends. But now I know the the original ending. I'm like, oh, actually, I would it's watch this better. again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, definitely a solid seven point five. I will watch this movie again. It won't be necessarily my go to movie, but it's a very fun movie, and I love the music. So I do have the nostalgia glasses because I grew up with this movie. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it so tastes like cinnamon toast. <laughs> yes. So I I definitely grew up with this movie. This is one of my all time favorite musicals that was ever created. Like this is amazing. The music is super catchy. They have amazing voice talent. But I give it an 8.5. I've watched it multiple times. It, like, never gets old. I should have known. Honestly, to me, this movie never gets old. It's hilarious. And I love it. The music is really, really catchy and great. I mean, it is a little dated. The music is a little dated. The outfits are definitely dated. The hair is super dated. Yeah. But it's a great movie with an interesting storyline. It hasn't really been done over and over and over again. So I really enjoyed it. I mean, <laughs> there's just like a few things that <laughs> like sounds good, bro. The sadist who talks about, you know, when he was growing up, he would torture and kill small animals and all, like serial killer in the making right there. Yeah. Sadist with psychotic tendencies, become a dentist. Great idea. Fantastic idea. (laughs) I do find it hilarious when a masochist comes in (laughs) and suddenly it's not so great anymore. (laughs) Yeah, it's not fun for him anymore. It's no fun. (laughs) It's no fun when they don't scream and show fear in their eyes (laughs) and pain, lots of pain, and don't enjoy it. Oh, my God. that That was kind of funny. But I do find it interesting that it's like, it's like making a deal with the devil. Like, at one point, he was really against it, and it was very concerning to him. Like, he would feed it his own blood, but even that was getting to be a bit much for him. And then the plant's like, you need to bring me a sacrifice for your shrubbery. Bring me a shrubbery. Yeah. Bring me a sacrifice. No, the shrubbery. Uh, the shrubbery. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and he seems just completely appalled by the idea and everything until he witnesses this sadist d bag <laughs> slapping around the girl of his dreams. And then suddenly, you know, this doesn't seem so bad. <laughs> and I really enjoy the song that goes along with it. Guy sure looks like plant food to me. <laughs> yeah. It was it was really really great. The puppetry is amazing. The the effects, the effects I think were better all around in the director's cut for the ending, but I like the theatrical version better, story wise. It makes a bit more sense, somewhat. I have an issue with the the electricity, but we'll get to that later. But I do enjoy it a lot better than the director's cut for sure. We were sitting there watching it, and I'm like, I don't think that happened. <laughs> None of this looks familiar from, like, this point on. I don't remember any of this, and I've watched this multiple times. So that was a different experience. Definitely like the theatrical version better, though. 100%. The gore isn't, like, too bad. They show a little bit of blood, and when they show, like, the body parts, they don't really show any of the gore around it or anything. It's, like, wrapped in newspaper. So, otherwise, he moves on to eating people whole. So it's really not, like, that super gory or anything. There's, like, suggestion of lots of blood, but you don't actually see lots of blood. hmm So it's a little mild in that department. Yeah. But it's still got a pretty good horror element, though. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. But it is a little safer than, like, it's a lot safer than Rocky Horror Picture Show, content-wise. Oh, yeah. Or Dr. Giggles, or Body Parts, or any of the other... Saw. Way better than Saw. Yeah, like, I would almost call this a family-friendly movie. It is. 
Yeah, they've they've really made it a more family-friendly, kid-friendly type movie. I watched it when I was little. But I would say for older kids, so, like, I, I don't know. I, I don't know like if four. I would feel comfortable having my kid. I think I saw it first when I was, like, four. It's a, it's a singing plant. Yeah, but there's dismemberment. Eh, it's singing plant. But... That doesn't take away the fact that there's dismemberment. Feed me, Seymour. (sighs) Parents, watch the movie first. (laughs) Decide for yourself. To each their own. No further comment. (laughs) (laughs) To each their own. So, but that's, that's really all I have for entertainment. I love this movie. Yeah, it is a good movie. It's one of my favorites. So, for realism, I'm sure you will get a little bit more into detail on like what my points are but like (laughs) the dentist being a a sadist was a bit extreme it's like maybe someone can go into dentistry and be a sadist but if they're purposely giving their patients pain they're not going to stay in business very long and also the fact that i know it was probably just the thought at the time, but whenever the girlfriend was being abused and pretty much everybody knew she was being abused, the shop owner was like, oh, it's none of my business. It's like, excuse you. Yes, it is. That's a crime. But then also the the main character, it's like he's like, oh, I'm going to murder him rather than call the police. But it could just be a product at the time. I don't know if the police took those allegations as seriously then as they do nowadays. So that could be why, like, maybe they just thought that the police wouldn't take it seriously. But that's, like, a huge fault as far as, like, how they handled that. But then there's also the issue with the plant had no eyes. Maybe he has, like, really good senses. But, like, he knew what phone number to dial. He knew how to use a phone. Like, if he has no eyes, he's not going to know. And then... Yeah, it is plausible, of course, for a plant to need blood and flesh. We have current plants that are alive and well nowadays that eat flesh. So that's the only part that's not realistic is the fact that it's like sentient and it's a thinking being. Well, again, extraterrestrial life form. Yes, but typically plants aren't sentient. Like, there, there are certain evolutions of life that we can kind of keep track, but it is from outer space. So, like I said, plausible, plausible, but unlikely for it to be specifically sentient. And then <laughs> the main character, of course, he wasn't a psychopath or anything, but he wasn't very good at murder. Like, he wasn't being inconspicuous at all. He, like, the only way he is hiding the evidence was the fact that the plant was eating the people. Like, whenever the, the dentist went missing and they're like, oh, there's, they were, there were gas masks everywhere. Like, they had a sign that something bad had happened. And then this is specific to the director's cut. And this is my biggest beef with it. <laughs> so the plant attempts to eat the girlfriend. And then the director's cut... He gets her out, but then she, like, dies. And it's like, you see that she's got, like, a little stab in the stomach, but it's just, it's a little stab, and she just dies, and just... (laughs) A little crunch. Yeah, I was like, it was just a little crunch. Like, how did the, how did she die? It's like, I know she's little, and and maybe, like, fragile, I don't know, but... She's a stick. (laughs) But even six can can survive a, a little crunch. Like she rolled a one. She, oh no! <laughs> but that's definitely my biggest complaint about the director's cut specifically. But yeah, I don't remember if I said my rating, but I would rate this a three. Because it's like there's some things I'm like, mm, okay, maybe, probably, yes. But a lot of things I'm like, no way <laughs> you would be able to get away with this stuff. So I would also give it a three. I think that's fair. Um, I do think that it was great that he mentioned he had tried everything under the sun. He had read a lot of different books and everything on botany. And he was trying everything he could to perk up that plant. And it just wasn't 
working. He had tried different plant foods, minerals, different levels of sunlight, different positions and everything in the, the room or outside and that kind of thing. Different levels of water, ranging from, he said, desert to mud. <laughs> so, and that's, that's pretty accurate, I feel like. There's a lot of different plants out there, and each one needs a different type of care. So different water levels, different composition for the soil, different levels of light. So, and some of them, if you give them just a little bit too much of one particular thing, it croaks. So there are some that are super delicate and others that you can't kill the thing if you tried. So <laughs> it, it was nice to see that he really was trying everything he could think of. I am a little bit surprised that he didn't try to feed it any kind of like insects or anything. Since it did look very much like a Venus flytrap. Yeah. Like a breed of it. Or kind of a, like a cross between a flytrap and a pitcher plant. Pitcher plants, if you guys don't know are also carnivorous plants, and they're amazing. They actually have kind of a bulbous, almost flowery kind of thing. They literally look like a pitcher. It really does. And then bugs will crawl in it because they have like this syrupy sweet nectar at the bottom, but then it traps them there and it dissolves them. <laughs> And it's awesome. It's like I knew that, but just the way that you're like, and it dissolves them. Well, it's, it's really like, ah. cool. <laughs> I mean, it is cool, but at the same time, it's kind of terrifying because you kind of put your Nature's place in that. brutal. <laughs> yeah, it really is. It really it's is. It's brutal and beautiful. <laughs> so, love it. But I'm surprised he didn't try something like that. Maybe catch a few flies or something and try to like have it over it or stimulate like the top of it where there was a clear opening and see if maybe any kind of like movement or stimulation there would have it open up and attempt to nom. <laughs> <laughs> so I am a little surprised he didn't try that. I feel like he would have, especially when he mentioned it, it looked like some variant of a fly trap and that he had read so many books and all, but it's whatever, that's fine. I do think it is kind of a product of the times that he wasn't caught. Because he really does suck at murder. I know he's like the super nice guy, always does everything by the book, if he can. You know, he's a little clumsy, but he really does mean well. But to just wrap the body in kind of a sheet, I don't know where he found the sheet, <laughs> and drag it... In the street and down staircases and everything. That was a really funny scene, though. It was hilarious. But at the same time, really? <laughs> so, and I know it's supposed to be, like, the poorer area of the city, downtown, wherever they are, at Skid Row. So, maybe that kind of thing is normal? Yeah, if maybe it is, I too. have some concerns. <laughs> I mean, I knew they were in a bit of a bad area, but that's a bit much, I feel like. <laughs> now, sadly, I do see the abuse kind of thing happening. I do. It still happens today. A lot of the problem lies when the person being abused doesn't try to get out of the situation or doesn't report it or doesn't say, yes, I will testify. And a lot of that is also because they know that there's usually a time frame when the person is out on bail or whatever, and not much is really going to prevent them from taking their anger out on that person. So as horrible as it is, unfortunately, I do see that happening, and it would be fairly accurate. And even if other people report it, again, if, if the person being abused doesn't come forward and say, yes, this is what's going on and all, and yes, I will testify, they can't really do much, sadly. So, it's unfortunate, and there have been a lot of strides since then to help with those kinds of situations, but we got a ways to go, for sure. I did set aside the fact that it is a plant, a sentient plant, from outer space. <laughs> Because otherwise this whole thing wouldn't work. But I did also mention to you while we were watching that hmm, for a plant with no eyes, it sure dials a phone pretty well. <laughs> Especially since it's a rotary phone. Like, 
you can't a payphone, <laughs> a rotary payphone at that. So for it to know not only the number, but be able to dial it accurately after putting in change from the register, that's kind of impressive. It's bullshit, but it's impressive. <laughs> Some plants do have the ability to sense what's around them from either electromagnetic pulses or air currents or things like that. So I can kind of see it knowing where people are to be able to grab it and things like that. But the phone, no. That's not how that do. Yeah. <laughs> so either it can, it's just omniscient and can see everything or um, pick one. <laughs> So I also call BS on the main dude, Seymour, when he survived a ton of bricks, wood, and other debris from a decrepit building falling on top of him from the plant bringing the house down. But okay. Also, a lot of plants would be grounded from their roots, so the electricity might not have worked. And if it did, it looked like a really big wire, big live wire, so it might have, but he likely would have been shocked as well. And if the plant exploded, and if it was that kind of wire, he would have too. Pieces everywhere. Or at the very least, barbecue. Ew. Yeah. So not very accurate there. But the rest of it, yeah, I could kind of see. In that time period, they didn't have as many tools and, and things for evidence that they do today, or a lot of the same procedures. They're a lot more strict nowadays. And they have a lot better tools and equipment to gather evidence nowadays. So it might have taken them a bit longer, but I still think they would have caught him much sooner. Especially if he was stupid and made an appointment. Oh, you're the last appointment of the day? Hmm. Bit suspicious, sir. You clean up the body, but don't bother cleaning up the mess. That suggests a struggle anywhere. <laughs> tools everywhere, masks everywhere. Don't clean up a lot of the blood on the floor that the boss mentioned. No, I'll just chop them up in the middle of the street. That'll be fine. Perfectly fine. You suck at murder, sir. But this is fine. I digress. I'm good. You're good? I'll, I'll get off my soapbox. You feel now. better? I do feel a little better. <laughs> yeah. I still love this movie. It's not accurate at all, but I love this movie. But thank you again, GoPro Unboxing, for requesting another really fun movie. I appreciate it. I feel like it was... <laughs> A really good movie to start off the Halloween season. Not only do I love this movie, but it was worth it just to hear her go, oh no, when he realized that the plant wanted blood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she got to see all of my raw reactions to the movie, but it was, it was a really amazing. good movie. Like, this is now in my top tier of movies. Yes. So. If you guys haven't watched the movie... If you're not into musicals, you might not enjoy it as much, but... It's so fun, and the music's so catchy. <laughs> but it it's a really fun movie. It wasn't exactly what I was expecting from what I've heard. But yeah, it, it's a really good movie. But once again, guys, thank you for joining us. And please comment on what you guys thought of the movie. And if you'd like to recommend a movie and keep up with their content, you can find us on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and most places that you listen to podcasts. And if you'd like to support the podcast, please subscribe, like, and share our content. We also have a Teespring if you'd like to support us monetarily. You can find the sites mentioned in the links below. And until the next time, guys, stay safe and stay spoopy. Bye! Bye.